playing the Miracle deck. It's hard for me to pick against him, honestly. Yeah, we talked about earlier, Eddie Solis, a former JSS champion. That's a term from over 10 years ago. Um, Bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back. <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am right now if the JSS did not exist. Delver of Secrets to start things off. All right, Delver in turn one. I mean, it's hard to say someone's a huge favorite when the decks have as much overlap as they do. You know, Eddie Solis has more a more aggressive style. He has cards like Delver. Joel Set has cards like Sensei's Divining Top, which are pretty good. Hmm. Tries to trigger the Delver, but it's not going to flip. Solis playing at a pretty quick pace. Going to attack here for one. Yeah, so I think... Despite all the overlap in the decks, Eddie's got to be decently aggressive here. Um, as you see, he has the possibility to make a second Delver or a turn two Stoneforge Mystic. He's going to go ahead and opt for the Delver here. You saw him play a Plateau for the turn. Most of the times these decks don't have that card, but there's just one of those here in Solus's deck. You see Lissette's just going to play a Plains, pass the turn back. He does have a copy of Terminus in his hand. Daze is going to flip over these Delvers, so hit one and hit two. Yeah, now the question will be if Lissette has a way to brainstorm that Terminus on top. Yeah, that's the spot he wants to be in. Of course, he could just spike one off the top. But right now, <laughs> right now he's under the gun in a pretty bad way. He's going to draw a card. That's not a Terminus either. Yeah, he's taking six, and this could get pretty brutal pretty quickly. Oh, there's a Brainstorm that he was looking for. That's good to go. So hit one is Karakas. Two is a Tundra. Three is a Mystery. And he's going to set some cards back here momentarily. But I think we, you and I have a pretty good idea of what's going on top. Yeah, I think Terminus is going to go on top. He puts Terminus, and it follows it with an Entreat the Angels. Mm -hmm. A little scary that he's going to go down to seven here, presumably. He's going to go down to seven. He will have four mana in play, so he'll have enough mana to, to mount a pretty good defense if they get in a counter war over this Terminus. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do get in one. Here's the attack. Let's say it's going to go down to seven. But now it's time to actually do something. I mean, double Delvers is always is so aggressive, you know. It really forces your opponent to have an answer very quickly. See, Solus actually wants to cast the Stoneforge Mystic or just hold up the defenses. He's going to hold up the defenses here. Yeah, I really like that play. You have such a great clock on the board already if you're Eddie Solus. There's n you don't need to add another card to the battlefield. Make Joe answer what you have right now. Let's have a battle, shall we? Terminus is going to be turned over. So you gotta, right. you're going to have to pay the mana for that. Solus, making sure he knows exactly how this works. This is the card I've drawn for the turn. I'm going to pay one mana for this. The so question is, does, does the Miracle Trigger resolve first? Exactly. So what... I think Eddie was, I was asking him to pay for it. So what happens with Miracle is first you reveal the card, and then you're revealing it to Miracle it. And then you make, once the card is revealed, then you have an opportunity to cast it for its Miracle cost. You may also not cast it for its Miracle cost. Now, I think the fun thing here is how does this card work with Vendillion Click? Because it goes to your hand, but I think you have the ability to put it to the bottom with the click trigger, and then you can't actually miracle it. So I think Solus is asking, okay, so where is this? Is this card in your hand or not? But when you draw a card, of course it's in your hand. So he can't actually even dealing yeah. click this card, and you then he would actually choose that, put it on the bottom, and you can't miracle it. So Yeah, the card is in his hand, and it just has a special ability to be cast for its miracle cost. Yep. So again, we're going to have a bit of a showdown here. All right, so the white mana was paid. Joe is Lissette attempting to cast the Terminus for white. Force of Will from Solus. Exiling days, so Lissette no longer has days to worry about. He's not too concerned. He's pitching Spell Pierce to his Force of Will. Mm -hmm. well, Lissette's going to go down to six to do this, which is a little bit dangerous, just because now he's in double lightning bolt range, but the job is done. Terminus is going to resolve. Delvers are going to go to the bottom, and now we work our way into stage two of this game. Yeah, if you look at Solus's hand, there's two more dazes in hand right now. Will Joe try to cast Jace here? Will he try to just play a Snapcaster Mage and leave defenses up? We're going to find out. Especially when Solus does remove a copy of Days to the uh, to the Force of Will. It's a little suspicious, but also at the same time, Lissette can just be patient, which is something he always does. Yep, ever the patient player, Joe Lissette, no need to go for the, to go for the Jace there. You know, it's an empty board, right? That's where Miracles wants to be. Snapcaster Mage here. Yeah, this is on Eddie Solis' end step. He's going to go ahead and snap cast a Brainstorm here. There was, and I, bl I believe there was an Entreat the Angels left on top of Jolisette's yeah, that's deck. the first card he's going to draw, and that's the card he probably was hoping, okay, I take care of this stuff, and the next turn I Entreat the Angels, and then I'm good to go. However, Tree Nemesis is going to put a huge dent in that plan, which Tree Nemesis does, which has caused some major problems. Yeah, it's a two-turn clock, so it's actually faster than the Army of Angels that Lissette could make. Yep. Um, so with the card he's going to have to fight over, he's going to have to get that Jason to play, I would think. Yeah, and that one doesn't, do, that, again, that one doesn't do very much either just because of Trunian Nemesis. Right. Just can be ignored. So Lissette has to find another copy of Terminus here. 
to actually work his way back into this, I believe. I think that's the only card he can find to get himself out of this situation. He could sort his own creature, stuff of that nature, but I think it is end up going to be lying on Terminus here, which he does have four copies of in his main deck. The difficulty is that Solus has a pair of dazes in his hand. Even if Flissette's able to find the Terminus, it's unlikely he's going to be able to resolve it, as he's going to have to resolve it promptly. Yeah. Here's Jace. Is it time to daze? It might be. How much does you, if you're if you're Eddie Solis here, do you daze? You know, True Name Nemesis is the card that matters, right? I think this to me feels like a bait spell. Yeah, I I actually agree with you. It does feel like a bit of a bait spell. Like, I, but at the same time, I kind of think Joe needs it. But then again, the top might be the more important thing that's out here. Yeah. Well, the top two cards of Lissette's deck are already known and presumably don't help Lissette. Yep. He's gonna go down to three now from True Name. It's time to spike a Terminus. He's got to spike a Terminus. He needs to miracle the Terminus. Yep. Swords will buy him a turn, too. He can Swords his own stuff. Snapcaster Mage to go up to five. Eddie Soul is going to sacrifice Nerd Mace to go get a Tundra. Shuffle pretty quickly here. And then I think we're going to see him deploy a, a, a Stoneforge Mystic in just a moment here. And that mm -hmm. is what we're going to see. So as we work our way into the late game here... He'll have equipment ready. You see Joe yeah. shuffling, and he said, I'm sorry. And, but honestly, the, I, I see that happen so many times. Yeah. You're like, wait, I, I'm going to go back in the deck. Yeah. Hold on. It's just a bad habit from uh, from the player doing it. And there's Batter Skull. Terminus looking even better now if he's able to find it. And Solus doesn't really have much of anything in his hand. A couple of Volcanic Islands, which Joe knows about, along with the Batter Skull now. Joe's going to spin his top right now. See if he maybe that Terminus is the third card down. There's an Entreat. There's something. There's not a Terminus. It's a blue card. Looks like it was a Fencer. Yep, so that's not going to be of any help. Take and a draw. I don't, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think there's anything else that can do here. Well, I mean, he can look he one can more look card. look one more, yeah. yeah. Three. I think that was a Counterspell. Yeah, Patty found a Terminus. He could Miracle it on Solus's turn. Just pass the turn back. Yep, makes a little swing. Can't imagine he won't do it, though. Yeah, bash you. That's it. All right. Eddie Solis, going to win game number one here over Joe Lissette. Blue, white, red, Delver up a game over blue, white, blue, white, red miracles in very quick fashion as we're going to bring it back to the booth here because we've got just one more trivia question for you. Matthias has the rules, and All I right. have the question. Rules here as they have been in the top eight and top four. If you've been following us, is that Cedric's going to ask you a question? You need to tweet the answer with the hashtag SCG Premium. Of those answers, at the conclusion of our tournament, one correct answer will be chosen, and that person will receive 12 free months of Star City Games Premium. But remember, to be eligible for it, you need to put hashtag SCG Premium on your answer and be following at SCG Live. Now, oftentimes, I would ask you now, as is our final trivia question of the day, of where are we going to be next weekend for the Open Series? The answer to that. It's Detroit, Michigan. Everybody knows that because everyone follows the Open Series. Yeah. Well, now we don't have a question. What? I do have a question, though. The <laughs> question right. is, who will be joining Patrick Sullivan in the booth for coverage next weekend? If you can name right. the person joining P. Sully in the booth, hashtag your answer, SCG Premium, and make sure you're following it at SCG Live. And again, we'll announce the winner at the conclusion of what might just be a relatively short matchup here between Solus and Lissette, as Solus was able to win game one really fast. I mean... Two Delver of Secrets on the play will certainly help will certainly help you do that. Uh, he had the two, was able to push a lot of damage through, and then Turner Nemesis came in for the cleanup. Yeah, and now let's keep one thing in mind too that you know, Delver is probably able to steal a game like that in game one. Uh, but that's not something I think is going to happen after Cyborg because you take a look at Lissat's Cyborg. He's got two Supreme Verdicts. We know he's got a main deck Pyroblast and Red, and Red Elemental Blast. So he's able to add one more copies of each of those. So now he goes up to four of those effects. He's got four Swords. He's got four Terminus. So that's 12. You have the two Verdicts. That's 16 ways to really handle a Delver draw. So I don't expect to see that kind of repeat performance from Solus, especially when he's on the draw. Uh, there are some other options here for Joe, but I think those are the big ones as we move forward. Yeah. So Joe will have a lot more control over cards. Like, even like True Name Nemesis, you said a lot of control over. Over Delvers, uh, he'll, he'll be a much better control deck. Uh, as far as Eddie Solis' deck, the matchups become a little bit tougher for him post board. He does have access to three red blasts though, which are very strong in this matchup against Lissette. They can kind of put a they can put a thorn in what Lissette's trying to do, especially when Lissette's on a counter spell based plan. He also has that last copy of True Name Nemesis to help him. Um, I'd imagine we'll also see these two Grim Lava Mancers be sided in 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 the matchup. One of the things that Solis can do is he can just force Lissette to have more, like, Solus wants to be more threat dense, and when he becomes more threat dense, then that's more things that Lissette has to answer, and Grim Lavamancer, I think as we saw earlier in a match with against Joe Lissette, was able to 
deal eight damage, I want to say, over the course of one game. Yeah. So that card certainly with a lot of upside. Our final match here. Eddie up a game, Blue Red Delver, been kind of reigning all over Legacy recently against Blue White Red Miracles here from Joe Lissette. Again, I think Lissette is still favored in the matchup, but you know, to be fair, it really just shows off the power of the Blue Red Delver deck as we saw last game. It's very unforgiving, it can kill you very, very quickly, and it has just enough permission to get the job done. And True Nemesis was, as you mentioned, on cleanup duty. Yeah, and remember, Joe Lissette is on such a tear with this deck, including the Invitational. He has currently won 17 of his last 18 matches with this deck. The only match he dropped was the top eight match at the Invitational. The other, the other 17 matches have all been victories for Joe. So, I mean, you talk about how he's on a tear. I mean, we take a look at our season two leaderboard here. You know, you know, you've got BBD leading the charge. But then after that, you've got Chris Van Meter. Eric Rill made a huge jump last weekend when we were in Milwaukee. Lissette making uh, presumably a huge jump here. He's in eighth place right now. You see he's got 81 points. But, I mean, you can add a bunch of points to that total. He could jump all the way up into fourth place right now. And it was funny because when we talked to him, he said, again, you know, he got here off of a travel voucher after some unfortunate travel at the Invitational. And he's like, you know, if I do well this weekend... I'll consider flying other stuff. And he's like, and if I do bad, then, you know, whatever. I'll just move on and we'll think about doing something else. But not only is he doing well, he's looking to actually win this tournament. And, the, and I even said, well, if you win this tournament, what's, what's next? He's like, maybe Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> the weekend after, maybe, uh, maybe Nashville, maybe uh, Cincinnati. You know. I mean, for those of you looking at it, so what the points breakdown, uh, first place is, I want to say, 20 points. Yep. So at 81, that puts him all up to 101. That would, yeah, put him into fourth place, I believe, on the leaderboard. Which is just a, a huge jump. A huge jump right at the beginning of the season, and that will incentivize him to want to travel and take one of those slots. I mean, you just watched BBD do it. BBD did it off of all of that crazy hard work and traveling. And it ended up paying off as he was able to catch Huey Jensen, pass him, and hold on at the Invitational to earn his ticket to the Players' Championship. Exactly. So, you no, know, second, second is 15 points, and that's, yeah. you know, that's still quite good. Yeah, I mean, so he's, he's still going to make a big jump. He's already moved up into, I believe, the top five yeah. with his performance today. Yep. And, yeah. and, you know, again, even a second-place finish might, might make him want to go to Detroit and other stuff here, and that'll be fun to watch. And it's really funny, too, with Joe, because, again, we think of him only as a legacy player. He has won standard opens in the past. I know San Diego, at the beginning of last year, he won a standard open uh, with the Humanimator deck. And then we think of him being so great in Legacy, and trust me, he is. He has eight top eights in Legacy Opens. He only has one win in Legacy Open, which is crazy to think about, even though he does top eight a lot with Miracles. But uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that he is traveling uh, to Open Series events based solely off the fact that he thinks that if I play in any Legacy Open, I think I am a favorite to win it. That's a pretty big statement to be making, yeah, yeah. to win. Especially, you know, these are, these are hundred, mul hundreds of people play in each of these tournaments. Yeah. And there are people, I'm sure, who play Legacy just as much as he does, but he is so proficient with playing this Miracles deck, and he plays it so well that, you know, I think it's a, a pretty bold statement to think that he can just fly around and, and win as much as he can with this deck. But, I mean, he does it all the time, every week, just about. All right, so we are underway for game two. You see, out of the board on Solo Society, he's, actually, he's boarded in Meddling Mage. That's a four of in his sideboard. Not the worst card, especially if he can figure out what some of the cards in Joe's hand are. So that let thing off, lets things off with a mountain, which is an unusual start for a blue-white Miracles deck. He does have that <laughs> small splash of red for the blast effect, so that's what he was representing on the opening turns of the games, and he has one of each in Red Blast and Pyroblast. Yeah, his hand is in no way weak to Delver, and I imagine he's probably a little disappointed that Souls didn't make a turn one Delver. You see Swords to Plowshares, Red Elemental Blast, Pyroblast, Supreme Verdict, all in his opening hand. He is set to deal with Delver. The one thing he doesn't have right now is he doesn't have a top and he doesn't have a third land, so he could get stymied a bit here. Go search for a basic so he doesn't get himself opened up the wasteland here, but here is the top. Okay, so I'll stand corrected. He had the top. He yep. doesn't have the third land, but he does have the top. Well, that's what the top's for. Now, the question is whether or not Solus is going to go try to fight a counter war over this top. Lissette has backup of a Red Blast, so he'll be able to fight it. But if, if Solus has, say, a Daze and a Force, he can actually go ahead and counter this top. That would be a lot of resources to invest. I agree. But, I mean, it might be worth having the battle over. Yeah, a lot of Miracle's hands can get really weak when you remove a Divining top from them. You know, you said you've seen Lissette keep lots of one-land top hands. 
it's just like so unusual, right, to just fight over Sensei's Divining Top. It's like, do I really have to fight over this card? And I actually think the answer is just a resounding yes, because it's so good in their deck, and it's so instrumental to making their deck function. Between all the fetching and brainstorming and chasing and everything else that this deck does. And also, I mean, Top is really the card that lets them hit their land drops, because they're a control deck that only has 23 lands. I don't think it can be overstated how important the card is. The deck is really just a collection of kill spells tied together by the fact that Top is just that good with fetch lands. Yep. You see, Solus does have the mana. He's got both of his colors here, from the Volcanic and the Tundra. Now the question is, what does he want to deploy? Looks like it's a Stoneforge Mystic. Yep, so Stoneforge Mystic actually cannot get red blasted here, so that's going to resolve. And he will have the creature in play. I don't know if he... Let's see what equipment he gets. There's obviously the Jite and the Batter Skull in the main deck. The Jite's already in his hand. I'm wondering whether or not he... Well, I don't know whether or not he boarded in a sort of fire and ice for the matchup as well. I would be a little surprised. I, I mean, not that I think it's bad. I mean, having through equipment isn't so bad. The question, I guess, is his sword better than GTA in the matchup, too. I think you actually kind of have to ask yourself. I know watching Michael Majors play last week, and I know he's, he boarded in his sword, I think, when we watched him play uh, in Charlotte a couple weeks back. So yeah. It protects your creature from Jace, which is more, I think, than what GTA does. Yeah, I don't think GT has a huge application in this match. I've kind of say that GT is not that good of a card and should be boarded out, but that's just how powerful each of the decks are and, and legacy in general. Is here's a flooded strand, going to allow the set to search for a basic plane. So red, white, and blue mana in play here for Joe. No wastelands to actually worry about here. Yeah, to mining top doing exactly what it's supposed to do, finding the card that that Lissette needed at this right now. It was just more lands, shuffle, you know, allowing him to shuffle the deck, reset, and continue to sculpt his draws. There's one of the two swords that Joe does have in his main deck. A lot of times you see four swords here in Miracles, but just two. And I think part of the reason Joe cut those is so that he could start Red Elemental Blast and a Pyroblast. It's a bold move, but it's a move that's obviously worked out for him. And so now that Stoneforge Mystic is gone, that Batter Skull will take an entire five mana to get into play. That's certainly not something that will happen for a while. Uh, Solus now, you know, wants to try to stick something on the board. Once again, we have a, you know, a board with just lands and a divining top. So you see he can go for a Meddling Mage or a Delver here. Gonna go with the Mage, and if this resolves, I'll be very interested to see exactly what Solus does name with the card. Interestingly enough, Lissette has the split of Red Blast and Pyroblast, mm -hmm. so he, because he's playing that, you know, he's protected from Meddling Mage, were Solus to name one of those two, but he named another card that's actually in Lissette's hand, and that card is Supreme Verdict. Yeah. And the thing I don't like about Meddling Mage in this particular matchup, like I understand wanting it just because you want to increase your threat density, is that it's almost impossible to name the right card against Lissette. Again, he's got two Pyroblasts, he's got two Elemental Blasts, he has two Swords, he has uh, two Verdicts, and he has four copies of Terminus. So, you know, you shut off one card, but, you know, another one's going to be able to clean it up, so. In a lot of ways, you're just playing a 2-2 two -two for two. Yeah. yeah. There is a Delver of Secrets now as well. Yeah, what that Meddling Mage is allowing him to do right now is he can extend two creatures on the board, and it will take two spells from Lissette to take to get those guys off the board. Well, I mean, that's just an exchange of resources, which I think Joe would probably be pretty happy to do. Absolutely. And Joe going to consider his options again. You see his hand here. He's got the Red Blast, a Pyroblast, a Supreme Verdict, and a Jace the Mind Sculptor. He's got to worry about two blue creatures, so those blasts are very, very live, and it looks like he's going to fire one off. It looks like he's going to blast them, I would guess, blast either of the creatures, then try to top into the fourth land, and Jace bounce the other one. Yeah, I mean, it's a little risky for him to do that, just simply because he's opening himself up to you know, a daze in that situation. You see Forceful is going to take care of this Red Blast, which, again, if you're Joe, I think you've got to be thrilled with this exchange that takes place. He's going to spin a top now. Yeah. So Sol is running very low on resources. His remaining hand is just two pieces of equipment. And Lissette with two more removal spells in his hand. So he has the board covered, and he has a top and a Jace. Yeah. He sees, it looks like Solus is pretty hell-bent on playing like a tempo game uh, by playing, you know, two threats at once and really just protecting his meddling mage with a uh, with a force wheel on the red element, or excuse me, on the pyroblast. So it seems like he is just really, really hell bent on. Okay, I don't want to let these things die because I have to get some damage in. You're going to see a delver trigger. That's going to reveal a daze. Daze not really a card. Lissette's worried about daze. Isn't going to work on red blast hand. It certainly won't work on supreme verdict. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go after the mage again. Yep. So pyroblast from Lissette. He has plenty of life points. He can afford to take some hits. Just for one for one trading. Pyroblast from meddling mage. May see Supreme Verdict for, de for the Insectile Aberration. 
And then the top and Jace, if everything goes according to plan, will carry the day for Lissette. Yeah, I think that's the entire plan here. He's going to spin top one more time. Might sack the fetch land, might not. Again, you might be thinking, well, you know, with Supreme Verdict, he doesn't have to trade one for one. But I, I think a situation, especially with GTA in play now, it's like, yeah, you do just trade one for one, you move on with life. Yeah, I mean, what he also can do, if he keeps that fifth land, he, he could play Jace, minus it, and bounce the Insect's Halibration. He knows that the last two cards in Solstice's hand he has perfect information. He knows yeah. their batter skull and days. That's true. He does know both of those cards. The Delver reveal showed days. The Stone Forge got batter skull, so he knows exactly what's up over there. So actually, I actually kind of like that play. You know, then you get an empty board with the Jace and the top, and in this situation, you still have the Supreme Verdict. Hit one, hit two, hit three. Yeah, wasn't happy with that top deck right there, the last one. So you cracked a fetch land to try again. Now, the question now, because it looks like Lissette found a Red Blast, which he's going to add to his hand here in just a moment, is would you rather save that or would you rather just cast the Verdict? It looks like he'd rather save the Red Blast. Uh, he can also just kind of blow him out here if uh, if Eddie goes to equip. Yeah, you just get to you get to actually ruin his entire turn. Yeah, Sideway Soul has tapped two mana. Not that he particularly had mana to use otherwise. And you see a little bit of a misstep there on Solus. He drew red elemental blast for the turn, but tapped his red source. Yeah, that's actually true. Now, of course, the red blast won't counter the red blast, but it would, it would be able to counter the Jace, and now that's not a thing that's going to happen. Yeah. The Daze is still good to counter the Jace at the moment, as Lissette does not have a fifth land. Yeah, believe you me, he's not going to play his Jace into a Daze. Yeah, we see three lands on top for the sets. What he is going to do is grab a fetch land, get land number five, reset his deck, and find something new. Yeah. It just isn't, I, I just don't think there's a world where he, yeah, would get would allow his Jace to get days. He's just too patient. So what do you think, though, Jason, to this board? There's one mystery card. Yeah, it I, can't be a red blast, right? Because there's white and there's not red mana up. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that, you know, Solus did draw a copy of Spell Pierce, but... You know, the one thing is, you, I'm not getting days. That's not going to happen. Yeah, that cannot happen. Unfortunately, he yeah. tapped the wrong lands for that one. Yep. So you can. That's it. Yeah. And Joe says, that's a tundra. You tap poorly. This is favorable for that's me. That's going to cost. However, the, the thing here is that Joe has to figure out how to use his Jace right now because he knows it'll die from the blast. Right. He has one turn, which I think means uh, the answer is brainstorm. Yeah. I think now that he has the information of the blast, it's like, okay, I have to brainstorm now to actually get some value from the card. Yep. So and he gets an extra card. And he'll sack the fetch land because he wants to see new cards. Yeah, well, he knows that the top two cards of his deck are both just lands, mm -hmm. so that would be a pretty mediocre brainstorm. Yep. So a slight misstep for Solus, but one that's not going to punish him too hard. You know, like, as you said, he will get to untap and take care, dispatch the Jace with the Red Blast. Well, we assume. We would, yeah, we assume. We assume. Um, the difficult part is while he can take care of the Jace, we're still in that game state where it's just lands and a divining top. So it, it's still you're still playing into the Jolisac game plan. Three cards to the grip here from the brainstorm. Looks like a uh, a land, an Arid Mesa, and a Vendillion click. So nothing crazy here for your Miracles player. But I mean, Arid Mesa is pretty nice here in combination with Top, simply because he can clear it away again if he needs to. Exactly. So you see, he puts two cards back. This is off the Jace Brainstorm. He does have mana up to spin Top on the end step two, which will help him look one, one card deeper. <coughs> and now another blast drawn by Solus. Now, of note, which blast? Okay, he still has to tap the red mana for it. Um, he uses Red Blast to take care of Jace. Now, was Red Blast the card he showed last turn, or did he show Pyro? He blast? showed Red Blast last turn. Okay. So Red Blast takes care of Jace, but no threats for Solus. And I think, and therein lies the problem here. Yeah, he doesn't, I mean, he's just not pressuring Joe. And so now Joe gets free reign to just spin the top and do whatever he like and move forward accordingly. And as you mentioned, this is exactly where he wants to be. Board's clear. The cards he can, he can work through that are in Solus's hand. You know, like the Red Blast in Solus's hand is annoying. Sure, but, you know, like I said, all lands on a top. Great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose there's a GTA on Solus' side, so it's not all lands on the top, but it's pretty close. In the draw step, this is a Vendillion click. Pretty good Pyroblast target. Yeah, I would assume we're going to see it Pyroblasted here. So I'm going to counter that. And again, I think Lissette's okay with that exchange. Yeah, absolutely. And looks like Solus will get to get a threat into play now. You're still in Solus' main phase, and... Now he's going to get to cast Stoneforge Mystic. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he brought it in the Sword of Fire and Ice. You know, see, the other two pieces of equipment are accounted for. He doesn't even search. Answer is no. 
and the top card of Joe Lissette's deck. He has found and entreat the Angels, and he can play around days appropriately. And I'm pretty sure Eddie's hand are those two cards that Joe knows about in Batter Skull and uh, and days. And if that's the case, he can entreat for three and be very happy. Yeah, there is a GT and Stoneforge on so Eddie Solis' side, but that's not going to compete with 12 power in the air. Yeah. Basically, challenge accepted right there. Yep. Time to turn the corner. Time to time to win. Well, we think. <laughs> I mean, I suppose. Yeah. No, he 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 hasn't put the entreat on top. He's yeah, he's just... put it in the middle. I mean, the, the, again, you don't need to yet. The thought process here might be that okay, chances are, Eddie is going to go. All right, I will equip my Jutane attack because we have seen that line of play before with the Delver. Now, there's no guarantee he does that because he has a batter skull that he might want to work into play. But again, this is a situation where, just, again, I don't think Joe is in much of a rush. Yeah. Why, he doesn't need to be. Why don't treat the angels when you can draw Aired Mesa? Yeah, like now we might just see him cast Supreme Verdict. Yeah. <laughs> I like the style. He's the most patient guy I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm not sure what he's playing around in this situation. It's because he has perfect information that I'm just like, well, I don't... I don't totally get it. Hey, just play super safe. That's all. Yeah, well, isn't the other play like 100% safe? It's not 100% I like safe. Doing, I like doing nothing. Don't get me wrong. Doing nothing's awesome. Well, you're proving yourself wrong right now because you just want to do something. All I want to do is do something. You never, you never want to do anything. Here's no, a like, well, he has access to the 75. Okay, I mean, I, just on principle, you're, you should be doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, he, again, he has no reason to do anything. That's the thing. Like, yeah, he sure, he could he could put the pedal to the metal a little bit faster if he wanted to, and I guess like, if we I were mean, in timed round, sure. I mean, if there's a button in front of me that actually reads win the game, I'm not, like, so sadistic that I'm just not going to press it. He's just going to think about winning the game. That's all. Like, if the, if the button truly just says win game, you know, like, yeah, 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 you should, you should probably hit it. Maybe. Nah, maybe, you're just like, not. oh, I just love being ahead, so we'll just keep playing for a while. And Joe's going to okay. take a draw here. <laughs> going to spin top, I think, one more time. He's just going to play another top. Pass the turn back. So counterbalance, top, top. So now setting up the lock to take care of all the... Basically counter every spell here. We saw before when Lissette was playing against Bug Delver, this is a little more tenuous of a lock because of Bug Delver's ability to abrupt decay counterbalance. Mm -hmm. uh, no such worry here in the matchup against Solus. And there's a Tundra. And Solus is going to hard cast a Batter Skull now. Not sure if this is going to resolve or not, depending on what Joe's uh, you know, top cards are. You know, if he has a sword, if he has a five, what happens. Oh, he has a Force of Will, you know, chilling in the top three. Yeah, that'll, that'll take care of the Batter Skull. Um, but the thing that actually Joe needs to be careful of now is that there is a mystery card here in Solus's hand. It's a second copy of Days. Joe knows about the first one. So he could actually end up running his Entreat into a copy of Days here when he doesn't want to. All right, so... Looks like he doesn't want two tops, so he's going to he's going to go ahead and shuffle with the Arid Mesa. Yeah. So what he's going to do is he's going to oh. draw and treat Miracle, and I want to see how much he's going to pay here, because like he can play around two daises, or he could walk into the second daise, and that would be mighty ugly. And it, it, to be fair, like it's not the end of the world if he runs into the second daise here. It's just more of just like an annoyance because my entreat doesn't resolve, and yeah, he's going to get double daise now. Yeah. So okay, if your opponent here's here's the the play I would want to ask. So say if if Souls is your opponent, now he goes for the first days. Do you pay for the days, or do you try? Like I think if you're if you're set the heads up play is not to pay for the days, but is to search for a two. Why would he days unless he had another days, right? Well, I mean, do you do you actually get the opportunity to do that? Because okay, I sacrifice my hedge land, I pay for, like, and then I spin my top. Oh, you're saying, right. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't yeah, he just, okay, he's like, okay, it. days again. Now, the it, the interesting thing here is that the days is going to go on the stack, and Joe actually has the opportunity to spike the two from the right. counterbalance. So first, you can see if he can spike a two. Yes. As long as he has put his counterbalance trigger on the stack. So he does that, and... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty, then. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that'll take care of... I'll take care of that line. I am not going to pay for that, thank you much. Now my entreat resolves. <laughs> so, there you go, my friend. I mean, why'd you even pay for the first one, right? <laughs> we could have had a top activation yeah. here. When you're running good, you're running good. As Joe Lissette's got to untap with three angels in play, now he's just got to contend with a batter skull and a Jite. Sure. This is an attack here for 12. Gross. Solus is going to go down to four. Now, th there's a germ under that batter skull, right? Do you uh, remember to put the German to play? I hope. 
I do hope. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're going to... Uh, I think they're giving him the I think, yeah, I think they're asking to see, make sure he remember the trigger or not. We'll see in just a moment here. He, I mean, t- honestly, he no, may have forgotten. He yeah, I don't think he gets it. Yeah, I think he may have forgotten here. We'll see what exactly the ruling ends up being. I also don't think it matters whether he has it. I don't think it matters either. So if you're going to learn a lesson about remembering that trigger, this is a fine time to learn it because... You know, it didn't cost you a game. You were yeah. losing it anyway. Yeah, you because know, what ends up happening there is, okay, he play, he has a germ token. He equips the GT, right? Yep. And he attacks, uh, you know, puts the set down to eight. He goes up to eight, and he can gain he can gain four more life with the GT. That's but there's 12. 12. Yeah, there's yep. 12 power. That's still not so. enough. You need to so. gain more. Living weapon is a trigger, and you do have to remember it. And fortunately for Eddie, him forgetting it that game does not matter as we move on to a third and final one here between Joe Lissette and Eddie Solis. Blue, white, red. Miracles against blue, white, red. Delver. Yeah, as we saw there, the matchup looks like it gets a lot better for Lissette after board. Not surprising as the kind, you know, the style of deck he's playing, the the all, like slow grinding, all removal spells plus ways to card select. Doesn't surprise me that, you know, his matchup gets better. Um, we saw more red blasts that game on Joe's side. Uh, the, the thing that, that he Solis was able to board in is he's able to board into meddling mages um, along with really a couple red blasts of his own, but... I would say the extra removal pushes Joe into being a favorite here. Yeah, uh, wouldn't surprise me one bit. Again, I think that's why Joe has such a nice matchup, because he is just overloaded on removal, and Eddie doesn't have enough creatures, I think, to work through all this removal. So it's just a really, really rough road ahead here for Eddie. As you do see the sideboards there, just the options for both players. Again, I think Joe's going to bring the Pyroblast, the Red Blast, and we know he's got the Verdicts in there. Um, he's got some other options available to him. On Eddie's side, we saw the meddling mages come in. Wouldn't be surprised if there's another copy of Truny Nemesis in there. We saw Pyroblast and Elemental Blast from him as well. So uh, pretty straightforward approach. And it's almost like they're in a mirror match, except for Eddie's attacking and Joe isn't. Probably. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's a pretty decent way to put it. Um, it does force Eddie to be more aggressive, I think, than Blue White Delver naturally is. Blue White Red Delver still is a lot like a stone blade deck in that it's generally the defensive deck except when it happens to draw a couple delver secrets and then it just decides to be aggressive mm-hmm. um because of how this matchup works out he's he's really forcing solace into that aggressive role which when solace gets hands like the double delver hand he had game one that's fine but when he gets the more controlling hands or you know the hands with disruption but not as many threats uh, that's when it really starts to be a good game for Lisette. It's almost time here for game number three between Lissette and Solis. Again, Eddie's going to be on the play. Good place to be, able to break serve. Yeah, and interestingly enough, the player on the draw has taken... Well, that's not true. Joe has been on the play both of the games. This is the first time that Solis gets to be on the play. Um, So Joe lost game one while on the play, took game two, but this is where right, where Blue White Delver could could get a really good start. He can, you know, he can always put a Delver Secrets into a daze and never really let Lissette play the game. Yep. We did see that against Lissette during during the Swiss. You know, it happened to him where he just, he got stifled and dazed over and over until, like, while he was on the draw and never got to play. Yeah, he got Delver drawn. <laughs> and... <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. And this is going to be, I think, an attempt at it again here from Solus is he's going to sacrifice the Arid Mesa and go searching for a land. He stopped the Volcanic. He stops at Tundra. He's going to get Tundra. This leads me to believe, Matthias, that he has only oh. one land. Hey, look, but he does have Delver of Secrets and Days in his hand. Mm-hmm. That's real fun. So Delver's going to be there, and it's not going to get removed on the first turn. It's funny because when he got Delver drawn, uh, Lissette earlier, yeah, he ended up winning that match because he hasn't lost yesterday, but he said... Uh, to me in passing. He's like, you know, if I would have played every spell one turn later, I probably win the game. It's like, I just wasn't patient enough, which is ridiculous because he's the most patient guy I've ever seen play this deck. He's like, I just need to wait every turn. One more Discipline, turn Discipline, man. Discipline. Yeah. So we'll see if he's going to do that this go around here as he picks up a brainstorm as his first draw step. Yeah, there's at least a, co- a couple of white cards hiding in his hand. The white cards tend to be good against the aggressive starts. You see a counterbalance. We, in his hand, starts off on island. There's a spell pierce. <laughs> yeah. This is the, the Delver. Yeah, this All is right. the ability to be Delver drawn right now. Yep. Yep. Spell pierce. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so now he has he has the three man no, he has the blue wild and the cattle. And the reason wild and the cattle, like I said, is, is never blue, is because you can just play wild and the cattle, and then you can just counter everything your opponent does. And well that's pretty fun. Um 
There's a there's a daze, there's a Pierce, there's a GT. I and mean, we could even see they could double draw with the GT just try to get the game over with. I mean, at least Joe played a basic, right? Yeah, I mean that's a step in the right direction. There's a lot of matchups that you see in the Delver against Delver where then they started the game on a non basic and then it just gets real miserable for the other guy. I absolutely adore this play. So an attack, he's going to brainstorm. I think I think Joe's plan is like I think he wants that brainstorm to get countered. Like if it resolves, that's awesome. But I think his plan there was just like, okay, if you count us with the Dazer Spell Pierce, that's great. Good. I would love for that to happen. Good discipline on Eddie Solis' side to not counter it. You know, the gamers protect the Delver, and Brainstorm doesn't kill Delver. Mm -hmm. So Solis has no interest in countering it. I think Joe's just going to keep presenting threats to be countered. That's it. And he's going to put Eddie to the test every time. Of like, do you want to pierce this? Do you want to daze this? What do you want to do? Do you want to add to your board or not add to your board? Because the entire time, Joe's got, he's got fetch lands, and he's got basics in his hand. And so he's never going to open himself up to Wasteland. And he doesn't have to worry about Stifle. So he's just going to keep presenting threats that Eddie presumably has to counter. Yeah, and if you look at the cards in Solus's hand, it's not too much follow-up for the Delver. Uh, he has a pair of Meddling Mages. He has a Spell Pierce. He has a Daze. He has a Stoneforge Mystic. In comes Delver again. Unless that's going to go down to 14. Virtual 13 because the Arid Mesa. Eddie's going to, looks like, cast this brand new Stoneforge Mystic that was drawn. I'd be surprised if Joe cares about this. Well, if Joe can, say, Spell Snare this, that would be huge for him. Mm -hmm. Because then he can Spell Snare it, play it around Daze, can cast a Kill Spell to kill Delver, playing around Daze, and the Spell Pierce is down on Solus's side. Brainstorm going to resolve here. Three cards coming for Joe. Going to be able to put two of the bad ones back. You know, similarly, what he can try to do is he can try to find a copy of Supreme Verdict before he dies. Mm -hmm. I mean, ter Terminus is good, too. Yeah, Terminus is good. You can fight over Terminus pretty well. Uh, Supreme Verdict, you, you know, there's no fight that can happen over it. So his sweepers are good in counter wars. Stoneforge is going to resolve. We're going to see Eddie search up an equipment here. He's going to get Batter Skull immediately. He has the RDS GTA in his hand. It did not board in Sword of Fire and Ice. And Joe is going to probably sacrifice his fetch on the end of Eddie's turn. We'll see if he wants to search for a basic or non-basic. Of course, it is Arid Mesa, so he can search for basic planes or get the basic mountain out of his deck to turn on his red blast effects. We'll see which one he goes for. I think he has the white cards in hand, so we'll probably see him go for the planes. Yeah, I don't think he has any of the red cards in his hand just yet, so... I would be surprised if he searches for Mountain, but if he does search for Mountain, it's pretty telling of what he does have in his hand, so or at least what future draws. Yeah. All this that really needs to do is here is resolve two removal spells. Mm -hmm. But Blade Red Delver, most Delver strategy is very good at trying to stop your opponent from doing that. I mean, he's definitely under the gun right now. He stops at planes. He gets a planes. All right. So two basics into play. Wasteland still inactive. Now, the interesting thing there on Eddie's side is that he could have dazed the Brainstorm. Joe would actually have to sacrifice a fetch land, and because Eddie hasn't played a land yet this turn, he could have replayed the Tundra to have Spell Pierce available. Right. As it stands right now, all he has available is Daze, and that's not the most difficult card to play around here. As the set has picked up an island for the turn, you see a couple copies of Counterbalance over there and some, a bunch of other blue cards. Looks like a bunch of Brainstorms. Counterbalance is a great lock piece, but it's not helping Lissette right now. Yeah. The Brainstorms are good because they can help set up a Terminus, which is pretty important. He's going to play a top here. Maybe try to have a little battle over this. That's in. And you see he's baiting a Counterspell there. He played the top and I, before playing land three. I think he's baiting Counterbalance because like, he has a backup copy, and it's also, this game isn't about Counterbalance nope. either, but it's going to resolve. And I think that's another situation for if you're Lissette where it's like, if you counter this, that's cool. If you don't, that's cool too. So... Solus has not used his counter spells on anything yet. And I means let his opponent set up counterbalance top. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that mean now that would mean that you know that spell piece is probably never gonna get a chance to counter anything. Yep. But again, just think about the way that Joe sequenced those spells because he sh he could have played counterbalance first and then top. But right. top is the more important card of the two. Like, if counterbalance gets countered, that's fine, because Joe has to beat, beat what's on the board, and he'd much rather have a daze actually go after that, I think, than anything else. Yeah. Absolutely. So he does have, he has the lockdown. So if Lissette can deal with these two creatures in play, he should be set here. There's Meddling Mage. Now, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what this card names, because, again, this is kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If he names Verdict, you can turn on Terminus and vice versa. Yeah, he's going to name one of the two sweepers yeah. for sure. I think you named Terminus because Lissette has more Terminus. Counter Melange I mean, Trigger does miss if Dillian clicks the card revealed. Yeah, he has more Terminus in his deck. He has four Terminus, and he has 
two, two supreme verdicts. verdicts. And he names verdict. So, Joe could spike here. Maybe an upkeep spin? Maybe not. Maybe not. Draw the Vendillion. Do you think he actively wants Vendillion click here? Opportunity to block is pretty appealing. Yeah, I guess it's a 3-1. You could do a lot worse. Yeah, like the, the opportunity to block, take a look at your opponent's hand, see what's going on. Just going to pass the turn back. Yeah, he, he certainly can try to set up a Terminus. Um, he does have both top and a pair of brainstorms. He's a little constricted on blue mana if he wants to make that Vendillion click play. Soul is going to draw a card here. That was a timely Pyroblast. Yeah, so Soul is still with all the disruption in his hand with Pyroblast, with Spell Pierce, with Daze, with a pretty good clock here, too. He's been very disciplined about his counter spells. The interesting thing is that he names Verdict with the first one, but if he tries to resolve the second Vendillion click, that's where things get a little hairy, right? Or excuse me, the second Meddling Mage, because the second Meddling Mage can name Terminus, and the set is almost locked out in this situation. Yeah, I mean, Lissette will have to fight a counter war over that one. Here come the attacker, Stoneforge Mystic, hanging back on defense. Lissette is going to cast Vendillion Click here. I think it's interesting if this does resolve what he would have interest in blocking. I would assume it's Meddling Mage, but that situation is not going to come up here, it looks like. Yeah, Pyroblast fired off at that Vendillion Click. And even if Joe had the counter spell, he wouldn't be able to fight back here with from his hand. He can use top to win this counter war here. Yeah, I guess the question here is, do I spin top in response, or... Am I just going to, you know, draw a card with it? Guessing, yeah, he's going to start by spinning. You mean, if there's a Terminus on top, then he can probably let this happen. Yep. You see another Swords to Plowshares. He's kept that on top. May I reveal? I may. There's a Swords. Do you want to daze this? Yep. yep there's daze. Absolutely. So now he's going to... And wow, look at this. So he can daze... Hasn't How good is this? Hasn't okay. played a land yet. Hasn't, and he plays the land, and now he can Meddling Mage uh, Swords to Plowshares. Yeah. <laughs> I Which, think... Uh, Maging... Okay, so Lizette goes down to... Lizette goes down to four, I think, from that attack. Is it better to Mage Swords and Mage Terminus? Oh, he, oh wow. He didn't play land. He didn't replay he didn't the play land. land. I think he missed that he hadn't made the land drop. Wow. Okay. Lizette's going to start by Brainstorming. I mean, Solus is still going to flash in the batter skull on uh -huh. end step. Lissette has to find Terminus now. He has, like, no choice, I think. Yeah, it looks like it has to be Terminus here. Especially because of the batter skull. There's no way that... It seems unlikely that Lissette can keep Solus off four damage without uh -huh. Terminus. I see a Swords there. There's a Blast that he can't cast. So yeah. he's going to put back the Red Blast and the Entreat the Angels. And it doesn't even look like Joe even found a land here. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that even though he put two cards back, so there's still a third card to look at here. Let's not forget about that. He's going to cast Brainstorm now. So if that third card deep is... Well, he can go one more card mm -hmm. deep here. So he can go one more deep at the top. So in one of these two remaining cards, if it's a Terminus... He will be able to Miracle Terminus off Divining Top. Yeah, because what he keeps doing is he plus ones himself every time he brainstorms. So now he's going to put back two more cards, which means the third card down is going to be a mystery. Also, he found a fetch land this go around, so he can actually keep looking. Right, and amusingly enough, when when he draws the the Miracle using Divining Top on Solus's turn, um, the miracle of window happens, but before he casts the spell, though, Divining Top will be the top card, so it successfully plays around the uh, Spell Pierce that's in Solus's hand because the Spell Pierce will get, will get knocked by the Divining Top counterbalance. So he's going to pass the turn back. Solus? Probably going to activate Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, there's your Batter Skull. Boy, can he... Man, Joe has really tried to craft a situation where he can find Terminus to the best of his ability, which is all you can really ask for. Living Weapon Trigger is going to happen. Here comes your Germ Token. Yeah. Now, if last turn Solus had cast that Meddling Mage on Terminus, Terminus I think that would be out of outs. As it is, he's still in a real tight spot. That is a Volcanic Island. Will he be a Meddling Mage pre-combat or no? This is an attack with all the creatures. All right, Joe, can you find Terminus or not? Here we go. 
So he can look. There's a, yeah, he can actually. He could look at the third card deep before cracking this, I believe. Yeah, he can. I'm trying, but, to, I'm trying to figure out if he. Uh, because he has to go down to three. I'm trying to figure out if he can red blast if he can red blast and swords and still live, because he can swords the batter skull token, red blast the delver, and then he would end because because of the fetch line he goes down to three and then would take three from one from the stone forge and two from the mage. So yeah, so he had two options. He could have either looked one card deeper with the divining top, or he can play around days. Looks like he has chosen the play around days line. Yeah. Any amount to see the third card down? No, I wanted to see it. Oh. Well, actually, sorry, it's not even play around days. What this lets him do is it lets him have red blast in case Eddie has any yeah, counter spell. Will. Okay. And now spin that top. Does he find the terminus? Spin that top. Hit one. Hit one, no, two. Hit no, and three. I don't think he's there. He put that back really fast. I mean, there was a mystic gate in there. And I think he would have to be a top by now. That. Is going to do it. Wow. Eddie Solis <laughs> does win this match. Two games to one. Blue White Red Delver takes it down over Blue Red Miracles. The former JSS champion has a title again. Wow, congratulations to him. Yeah, and so really close game three there. Uh, Eddie Solis was able to, you know, play that aggressive Delver game, get early tempo down, and hold on just long enough to deal damage on that last attack. Yeah, never able to find a copy of Terminus for after a sideboard and just kind of got bum rushed there, unfortunately, for Lissette, where that's not something that happens a lot against Miracles, but that might be the best way to try to go about beating him. Like, he wanted to try to play the Delver game, but Jason's Spellpers didn't really show up there very much, and he was able to get the job done. So, wow, congratulations, Eddie Solis. Great patience on Solis' side with how he how he cast the spell pierce and Daze. Uh, amusingly enough, he uh, was patient when how he played the two spells, but at the same time, he never actually ended up using those spells in the matchup. He was able to save those two spells in his hand, and that forced, I think by saving the counter spells, it forced Lissette to assemble countertop to get around the counter spells. Mm -hmm. So then, so he really stopped Joe from ever being able to cast removal spells. So the threat of those two spells and the patience with which Eddie used to not cast them really ended up helping him here. Yeah, I mean,